Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Expert Insights to Win Government Cloud Contracts. My name is Kelsey Voss and I will be the moderator. And now I am very excited to introduce our three experts that are with us today. First, we have Naveen Rajkumar, who is Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer at Onvia. Naveen is extremely knowledgeable about technology and he was instrumental in establishing Onvia's private cloud environment three years ago. Naveen has played leadership roles as a technology service provider as well as a decision maker buying technology solutions. Ronit Cohn also jo joins us today. Ronit is an IT procurement strategist at Onvia, who manages the IT sales team. She has been working with IT companies one-on-one -on -one to help them find strategic and innovative solutions to get ahead of the bid and RFP process. Ronit has successfully helped clients generate recurring revenue by knowing where to find the business and how to beat the competition. And we have with us today Paul Irby, who is Market Analyst at Onvia. His main focus is on researching IT industry trends. Paul has 17 years of market research experience, both with telecom and software IT clients and government agencies. So he has an understanding of the tech industry as well as government procurement. Paul is the author of Onvia's white paper, Tactics to Win in the State and Local Cloud Market. Our webinar today is a direct extension of the Tactics to Win white paper that focused on state and local cloud projects in the public sector. For the white paper research, Paul took a look at three years worth of historical data as well as two to three years of future spending data in order to profile typical government cloud projects and purchasing activity to uncover leading trends in how state and local government agencies successfully use cloud solutions. He then provided a lot of great insights for companies in this market. Today, we're going to take a more in-depth look at what the term cloud means to different government agencies and to public sector vendors and why cloud is top of mind for government agencies. We will show you trends happening in the market at the federal, state, and local levels. We will discuss the profile of vendors who are winning awards, and we're going to share with you samples of recently completed projects, some samples of active term contracts, and samples of projects that agencies have planned for the future. And most compelling will be the expert advice we will provide on understanding the cloud procurement process what the keys to success are, and how you can win business in the cloud market. So I'm now going to turn the conversation over to the experts, beginning with Naveen. Naveen will help set the stage for why cloud computing is so important right now and why there's excitement, hesitation, maybe a little mystery, and also a sense of urgency for agencies that are moving towards the cloud. Thank you, Kelsey. It is good to be part of a discussion on how to win business in the cloud computing space. Cloud and big data are the biggest buzzwords in IT circles today. And I've noted that no IT seminar, conference or networking event is complete without a discussion about the future of the cloud. When we talk about the cloud, it is interesting that everyone has a slightly different understanding of what the cloud means to them. I thought it was important to level set our audience on the scope of our discussion before we start talking about trends and tactics. The graphic you can see on the screen captures all kinds of cloud-related projects that we see in the Onvia database of government procurement. And as we all know, Onvia covers 95% of the spend in the state and local market. The discussion that follows in the next few minutes will attempt to cover most, if not all of these areas. So what is the driving factor behind the government agencies moving towards the cloud? Our research shows us that the single biggest driving factor for migration to the cloud is reducing hardware and software capital and maintenance costs. The quote that you can see on your screens also reiterates this fact. It is very important to understand what the primary driving factor is since TCO or total cost of ownership will be on top of minds of the IT decision makers and hence any solution proposed should address TCO very directly. I think that's enough context setting and it's time now to look at some data 
and understand the trends in this space. Paul, can you please walk us through your findings? Thanks, Kelsey and also Naveen. One of the elements we looked at in the recent cloud white paper was how cloud projects were growing in comparison to IT projects as a whole. To do this, we focused on the 2012 to 2013 period and measured year over year growth in contracting activity, that is bids and RFPs. For this comparison, we focused on bid and RFP volumes as a way to illustrate growth as Onvia has exceptional coverage in the state and local contracts that are coming up for bid. What we found in looking at project volume was that first of all federal contracting in all IT was down by 8% for 2013. One third party IT industry forecast has predicted annual spending growth moving forward of only 2% in this market, which is consistent with the recent negative trend in projects. So with volume in decline and dollar values remaining nearly flat, you can see some of the weakness of the federal market. The sluggish growth in federal opportunities caused us to focus our research on the state and local market. State and local agencies grew by 5% in their number of IT projects put out for bid or advertised in an RFP. Healthy growth compared to federal, but it still doesn't really highlight the growth areas in the segment. When we split IT into subcategories, that is when we saw the real growth a 37% increase in project counts in the state and local market for cloud-related projects. In addition to looking at project counts and bid volumes, we wanted to take a deeper look into who is doing the buying. For this analysis, we took a look at the types of agencies that are purchasing cloud contracts in the state and local market. As you can see from the chart, over the last three years, state agencies represent 55% of cloud buyers in the state and local market. Cities sit at just 15%. What we think is actually happening here is that the data is telling the story of the technology adoption curve in state and local government. In the chart, if you look down below the state and the city sections, you can see percentages for IT projects as a whole, not just cloud. State agencies account for 32% of all IT projects, and cities account for 24%. These, uh, quote, normal IT numbers are a lot closer together. Using that as a baseline, it looks like states are over-indexing on cloud projects with around 70% more than their normal IT level, while cities are under-indexing with around 40% less than their normal share. We've seen this effect in other research we've done on IT spending. Feds typically lead the way followed by the state agencies followed by the cities. State agencies are quicker to adopt new technology like cloud versus the cities because of their scale, larger budgets, and bigger IT staff. State agencies lead the way in the state and local market and they set the pace for smaller county and city governments who often play a quote wait and see game to some extent. Now if we were to re-pull these numbers in say uh, another 12, 24 months, we wouldn't be surprised to see cities start to over index in cloud and state agencies return to a more traditional IT share which would mean moving from over half to around one-third of all state and local IT procurement. Now I want to turn the discussion over to Ronit who speaks with public sector cloud vendors every day so she can talk a little more about which vendors are winning in this market and give some examples of past, present, and future cloud projects in the state and local market. Thank you, Paul. Yes, the big winners are not always who you may think they are. When most people think of cloud, they think of the giant players like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Rackspace. What's interesting is that within the universe of cloud vendors, there are a few big names, but they aren't dominant. Now, as you can see in this slide, most of the companies that win the majority of the cloud awards are smaller service vendors. The list includes a variety of vendors, such as integrators, bars, and consultants, all of whom can compete directly for government business. The buzzword to describe many of the winners is solution provider. It's a term described as a versatile cloud vendor that can provide a mix of competencies like consulting and implementation, a one-stop shop for all the government needs. In this slide, you can see 
that many of the largest cloud awards go to the smaller or mid-sized vendors that would not be considered among the most established of IT competitors. Paul, can you describe what we are seeing here in this graphic? Yes. Ronit's description of the winning vendors <coughs> excuse me, is backed up by our analysis. The award dynamics in government cloud contracting point to a market with a lot of opportunity at all levels. In this chart, there are basically two important pieces of information. The declining vertical bars represent the percent share of the cloud contracts won by size of vendor. The smallest vendors under 10 million in revenue have actually 44% of the total. The giant players with 1 billion plus in revenue are in this market, but they only have about 10% of the awards. The other important piece is the average contract values, which are shown in the solid orange line, and move upward from left to right as the size of the vendor increases. The line of award size doesn't change much between the second group of the, the 10 million to 99 million and the third group starting at 100 million. This shows that smaller firms are able to successfully compete with much larger ones for the same size of cloud project. Generally, the smallest vendors with less than 10 million in revenue are less likely to win the really big cloud contracts with an average contract value of 116,000. However, some are still winning larger awards that go well beyond this average. For example, there was a vendor with total revenues of only 2.3 million that won a $1 million three-year contract with the state of Oregon. Another vendor with revenues of 3.1 million won a $585,000 software as a service contract with the state of Colorado. Finally, a vendor with total revenues of just 2.4 million won a $200,000 software as a service contract with the state of Vermont. Thank you, Paul, for sharing examples of smaller companies that have won larger contracts. Now let's start by looking at where the projects are and where top vendors are winning the cloud contracts. For this heat map, we selected five of the leading vendors involved in state and local cloud projects. The heat bubbles present where the vendors won the awards. With just these five vendors, you can see that the business is being awarded in every state. Imagine if we included 10 or 20 vendors, you do see some concentration of awards in the larger and most populous states, which is to be expected, and the opportunities are everywhere. The information is backed up by our data. The opportunities are at every agency level, including special district, education, city, country, and state. Now, let's look more closely at some of these projects, award amounts, winning vendors, and the agency level so everyone can see where the competition is winning. Let's start with a sample of a few recent cloud projects pulled from the Omvia project database that have been awarded and now completed. The Clear Creek Independent School District, Harris County, spent nearly $1 million to upgrade their storage area network, while the Illinois Health Information Technology Agency spent about $7 million on statewide healthcare information exchange using a SAS model. Now, the state of Colorado spent about $2 million to build an identity resolution server to enable sharing across agencies based on a SAS model. Knowing well in advance when these contracts end will give you an advantage to get in early. This slide shows samples of active term contracts. These contracts help you get in early by understanding which existing contracts your competitors hold across the country. By monitoring these types of contracts, it will help you ensure you never miss an upcoming renewal opportunity. The strategy behind these term contracts are to closely monitor them as to when they are expiring so you can build a relationship with the purchasing agency prior to expiration. Knowing when the contract ends and the value of the contract would put you in a proactive position. You no longer need to wait to respond to a bid, which we all know is too late, you know exactly which opportunity you want to pursue 
and if you even have a chance to win. This process saves you a great deal of money in the long run by being strategic about which contracts you are pursuing. Now on this slide, we have highlighted a few of the projects that we see are coming up in the future. This data was pulled from capital improvement plans. The key is to know what to do with this type of information. This information allows you to develop a strategy to win future business by building relationships with agencies well in advance. Your chances now have greatly increased in being specified in the RFP. Having a long-term plan will help you get in early. Some suggestions are to start by creating a government business forecast based on agency budgets and capital improvement plans. You can track upcoming projects that will help you generate revenue years down the road. You can even identify potential partners early on in order to compete on the larger projects. These are just a few samples of the many past, present, and future opportunities. So now that we have a taste for what's out there, Naveen, can you share with everyone the biggest challenges in cloud and the keys to success? Of course I will, Ranit. It is important to understand what the IT decision makers are looking for as they evaluate a new cloud strategy. Top of mind concern is information security. The biggest question in people's minds as they think about migration to the cloud is, is my business and customer information safe in the cloud? This aspect has to be addressed very clearly in any proposal or response to a bid that is submitted. The second aspect people worry about is uptime and availability. Bad news travels fast and any news around outages of cloud providers in the past has fueled the conversation around uptime. Redundancy and disaster recovery is something that always comes up and since people have choices between a private cloud, a public cloud or a hybrid cloud environment, it is important to understand the requirements of the specific government agency and to recommend the right solution. Now if you don't have prior experience working with government agencies, that is not a showstopper. You might want to leverage your private sector cloud experience and provide the relevant case studies of past experience as part of your proposal. Think about painting the similarity of the business problem and focus on how the solution achieved earlier the goals of the business and you can more often than not sidestep the lack of prior public sector experience. One significant difference in selling to the public sector compared to the private sector is the procurement process. Some small agencies have a flat decision making structure where the buyer and the decision maker are often the same person. In bigger agencies though, multiple layers have to be navigated before getting to the decision maker and not every person involved might be tech savvy. Irrespective of the size of the agency, it is important to research the background of the people involved and understand their technology awareness. Some agencies might be pushed towards adopting the cloud due to external pressures and the decision makers might not know what they're getting into. Due to these reasons, it's very important to take an advisory role and guide the agency through the decision making process. Demonstrate a solid understanding of security protocols and understand and address any sensitive areas proactively. You might recall that I briefly talked about total cost of ownership at the beginning of this presentation and would like to remind you all that focusing on the TCO and clearly demonstrating how TCO will change after the cloud adoption is important to your success. In my own experience, I've seen vendors avoid talking about the initial migration cost and instead focus on ongoing steady state costs. That approach will most likely backfire since decision makers want to understand the entire picture. Runeet, do you have anything else to add to this? Yes, Naveen, I do. In order to win cloud computing awards, you need to get in early. One of the strategies is to start by monitoring plans and budgets for capital improvements and future spending. These proposed or adopted expenditures are published anywhere from two to three years with an advance notice. The project coming up turns into a bid or RFP. Once the contract is awarded, 
you will see the bid results. This gives you an idea of the life cycle of the procurement process. Being that you are serious about winning contracts, since you are taking the time to be on this call today, you can't just respond to a bid and at that point it is too late. If you want to win and get in early, another strategy is to monitor competitor contracts. Support your team with the tools they need to track these contracts. You will need to know when these contracts expire, if there are any extensions, which vendor is holding the contract, and which agency is purchasing your service. Now, strategically track which contract you want to pursue. Do you need six months or a year in advance to get in early? That will depend entirely on your sales cycle. While tracking these contracts, you can identify partnership opportunities. Building relationships and maintaining them is key. I cannot stress that enough. This is a relationship-driven market. Research which agency is purchasing what you sell. Determine who the influences are and are in the agencies and who the buyers are and gain full access to the contact information. In addition to building relationships with the agencies, you want to forge relationships with other companies like yourselves, either larger or smaller. Opportunities can be as a prime contractor or subcontractor. Companies are looking to develop partnerships with other companies in order to fill a requirement specified by the agency. Some opportunities may be called out for disadvantaged or minority businesses referred to as set-asides. Many companies use channel partners to sell to the government. Resellers and manufacturers often partner. Since resellers will usually have everything in place, for instance, contracts, staffing, relationships, and expertise. The larger resellers will often have direct relationships with the manufacturers. For instance, CDW has a program in place that they use to partner with smaller companies. They will go this route when they need to partner for a contract to pursue specified opportunities. Now understanding the market and where to find the business can be a challenge. Be strategic about which opportunities you pursue. Initially, it is best to target fewer agencies rather than spreading yourself too thin. Understand the agency's procurement history. What are they spending their dollars on and how are they spending them? Identify sources that gather market intelligence. You need real-time data to track these time-sensitive opportunities. This market changes minute by minute. Determine where your company fits best so that you can ultimately become a significant player. Now in conclusion, let's go over some of the major points that we covered today. There is a dip in federal IT contracting. However, there is a 37% increase in state and local projects for cloud. There are ample opportunities for smaller businesses. It is a myth that the largest companies are winning the majority of the contracts. In fact, smaller businesses make up the bulk of cloud awards in the state and local market. There are opportunities everywhere at all levels of government. In the next 12 months, cloud-related projects will be greatly increasing in cities and towns. Think of the projects in terms of past, present, and future opportunities. The knowledge of the past and future projects is what gives you the edge over your competitors to get in early. Make sure you build relationships with the agencies and other companies to forge partnerships so that you can get ahead of the bid and RFP process and have a stronger presence when, go, when knowing when the contracts are expiring. You need to know where the opportunities are. 
and when the agencies propose or adopt a plan for future budget. This is your chance to influence the RFP process and understand what the agencies are specifying so that you can win. Understand the market by doing the research and knowing what decision makers are looking for when evaluating their cloud strategy. It is important to understand their concerns and be prepared to present the right solution. And by following the advice we've shared with you today, you are guaranteed to be in a great position to win more government contracts. Thank you very much, Ronit, Naveen, and Paul, for all this valuable information and insight. Uh, this is now our time for questions, so if anyone would like to write in uh, to the questions box, we would be happy to answer any questions you might have. We have a few questions that we'd like to answer right now. Our first question is, understanding that this is a US-focused research, do we see similar trends in EMEA? Uh, Naveen, would you like to answer this question? Sure, Kelsey, yeah. So this, uh, as you rightly pointed out, this is a US-based research. Uh, ONVIA primarily tracks uh, procurement information in the, in the United States. Uh, what I can do, however, is use my past experience and talk about what could be happening in EMEA because the trends are gonna be very similar. You might wanna notice the few trends that we talked about. Number one, people still don't understand cloud computing well enough, especially the decision makers and people who, who have this aspiration to move, move to the cloud. The difference between a private cloud, a public cloud, and a hybrid cloud is, is not very well established. So that is something that is uniform across the board. The decision-making process is, is pretty complex. We talked about smaller agencies, larger agencies, that's not going to change. Uh, some people are going to be very technology savvy. Some people are not going to understand what cloud means very well. So researching the decision makers and the buying process is going to be the same. It's going to be critical wherever you go. Uh, getting in early is going to be important. Uh, agency budgets, capital improvements plans, talk about these projects a year, two years, three years in advance, typically. Uh, knowing when these projects are coming up and how agencies are allocating their budgets uh, will help you get in early. Uh, as Ronit pointed out earlier, full solution providers have a very good chance of winning. Uh, governments typically want a one-stop shop for their solution. So if you can consult, if you can implement, if you can maintain the solutions all in one piece, you have a great chance of winning. The, the last piece I want to mention here is people don't want to sink millions of dollars in a solution that is untested, especially when there's concern around information security and uptime and redundancy. A lot of agencies are going after small proof of concepts. They want, they want to spend $25,000 to $50,000 and test the concept and see how it works. So that could be one of the approaches that you put on the table and say, hey, before you spend the millions of dollars, we can help you prove the concept. And that is a trend I've seen everywhere. So these are things that I think are going to be uh, not specific to the US, but will be applicable to any market you go after. Thank you, Naveen. That was, that was a very good response. Uh, now, we have another question here uh, in regards to one of our slides. This was um, where the opportunities were in the future cloud uh, space. Um, Ronit, can you go over uh, what the opportunities are and where they were pulled from for the future? Yeah, so what we were, had reference to was we actually highlighted a few projects that were coming up in the future. And this particular data was pulled from our platform where we track capital improvement plans and future spending. So this is where, to Naveen's point, where you can actually track contracts that are coming down the road, either a year, two years, three plus years down the road. So again, depending on your sales cycle, you need to know this type of information well in advance. Thank you, Rooney. Um, we now have a question. Um, we mentioned that CDW, IBM, Carisoft, Unisys, Tyler Technologies were in the largest uh, state and local of contractors. Are they the largest by revenue from state and local contracts or by volume of contracts? Uh, for, for our analysis uh, in, in putting together the little heat map of, of the different key competitors, we relied on uh, the volume counts. 
as opposed to as opposed to the dollars. Um, yes, yes. In fact, this it was pulled from the, actually the number of awards uh, that was handed or that was given to those particular companies. Um, someone is also asking, will we be distributing this after the presentation? Yes, we will. Um, so moving along, let's uh, take a couple of other questions here. What impact does a GSA schedule listing have on the ability to win cloud-based awards? Great question. Uh, Ronit. Yeah. The fact is, you do not need a GSA schedule in order to win the contract. So think about the GSA schedules as a phone book. What it is is a compiled list of all the vendors. So the agencies are not necessarily always looking into this to, to select vendors. So you need to be proactive. I know there's an impression out there. Clients may think I need to get my GSA in order to win the contract. That is not the case. Thank you, Ronit. And now for our next question. Oh, this is a good one. How can cloud handle the large bandwidth requirements for large numbers of users and digital video? Um, yeah, I'll take that. And I'll also take the next question. I'll combine these both. And the next question is saving video to the cloud can exceed the available bandwidth. How do we increase available bandwidth? Great questions. So this is one of the primary reasons for moving to the cloud. Because as you know, if you have a physical infrastructure, uh, in your offices or in um, uh, a service provider, you're constrained based on how much of physical hardware you have. So if you suddenly have a peak load, or if you have a lot of interest in your solution, you will be constrained because of your physical hardware limitations. The public cloud is a great place to go because there you can scale up and scale down on demand. So if you're running a promotion and you expect a lot of hits on your video, audio, whatever material, you can scale up very quickly. And right after the promotion, if you see volumes coming down, you can scale down. Without a huge hit to your capital uh, software or hardware infrastructure budget. Uh, as you know, cloud costs are mostly operational expenses and it's subscription based. So you can clearly control the amount of money you spend in terms of scaling up or scaling down. So for your particular case, cloud is the way to go. Thank you, Naveen. Okay, now we have another couple of great questions here. Uh, you mentioned monitoring competitors. How do you go about doing this type of monitoring? Are there tools that you can share? How does Anvia help small businesses win these awards? Ronit, please tell us. Yes, absolutely great question. So what we do on our platform is we actually track the existing contracts. So you have visibility into contracts that have been awarded by your competition. So think of it like this. Now you know who holds the contract, what the value of the contract is, who the agency is, and even when the contract expires. You would even know if there are any extensions to the contract. Now what this information does for you is, now you know I can call in six months, a year in advance, start calling these agencies build a relationship, influence the RFP process. This is how you're gonna win, how you can monitor these contracts. And then the second piece is that we're tracking future spending and capital improvement plans. These, these are opportunities that have not gone out for bid. This is well in advance of the bid process. So you can start calling on the agencies, influence that process, and get yourself specified in the RFP. So let me give a quick follow-up on Unit's answer. Uh, as you all know, all this information is available in the public domain. Agencies put out their budgets, their capital improvement plans, they put out their bids in newspapers or on their websites. What is the difficult part is all this is non-structured uh, or data that is not formatted in a way that is easily consumable. So if you're looking at a budget of an agency and you're trying to find a cloud project, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack because you've got to go through thousands of pages of materials to find what you're looking for. Somebody's asked the question saying, do you have any tools you can talk about? Yes, we do because we have this unique uh, concept called project previews where Anvia goes through all these budgets and capital improvement plans and we pull out projects that are specific for our customers what our customers would be interested in. And we not only pull out the projects, we tell you who you should talk to, what is the possible 
a size of the project and what is the funding source of the agency. So you can determine where you want to put your resources on. The other piece, I think somebody asked about how do you even track all this information and monitor about what your competition is doing? We have a product called Vendor Center that it, the heat map that you saw is right out of our product. And what we do is we normalize all the agencies and all the vendor information in our database. And by doing that, we can pull up aggregated information of, so let's say you want to look at what has CDWG done over the last five years or three years or what they're going to do over the next few years. That information is aggregated in our database and you can put in the name of a company and you can see where they're doing business, what agencies have them as their preferred partners, so on and so forth. So the aggregated tools are very useful for somebody who wants to go after this space. Thank you very much, Ronit and Naveen. Do we have time for another question? Okay, let's see here. We have um, another good question here. If GSA schedules are not as heavily leveraged in the state and local market as they are in the Fed, what are some of the more widely used contract vehicles across state governments? So it's, it's typical bids and RFPs process uh, and uh, term contracts. We see a lot of term contracts happening. So contracts that are awarded over a period of three to five years because government agencies want predictability, want continuity. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean that you don't stand the chance. So if you see a three year contract out there uh, for, from an agency to a particular vendor, uh, that's an input to your pipeline because then you know when the contract is expiring and if you get a hold of the task orders, you know how much of money has been spent so far in the contract and how much is the residual value. So yes, GSAs are not as widely used in state and local, but look out for advance notices, look out for the budgets and capital improvement plans, look out for bidding opportunities, look out for RFPs, and more importantly, look out for those contracts that are out there. Thank you, Naveen. I think we have time for one more question before we finish today, and we can certainly answer more questions. Um, you can contact us later through email or phone. Our last question today is, government agencies often want fixed prices for a given contract length. Cloud-based contracts, by definition, is variable cost depending on the amount of data being stored. How can we convince governments to sign up for something that is has a variable cost from month to month. Naveen. Well, this is a problem a lot of companies face because the agencies want predictability. It's hard to give predictability in a cloud-based environment. So great question. The way to do this is, I think I mentioned briefly about this proof of concept phase. You might want to propose a discovery phase with the agency where for the first two or three months, it's a fixed bid of $25,000 or $50,000 where you go in and you understand the agency's exact needs, what kind of volumes are being transacted, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end of the three months, you will be able to give them a, a kind of a, a better advised fixed bid, which you cannot do on day one before the proposal is being written. So the strategy would be go for a smaller discovery phase, fixed bid, time boxed, where you do the discovery and come back with a full-fledged proposal where you have all the facts lined up. Thank you, Naveen. And thank you all for joining us today. We hope that you benefited from all this time that you spent with us. Please contact us with any additional questions, comments, and requests for more information, or if you would like a demonstration on how using the Onvia platform and tools, we captured the project and vendor data presented today, and how Onvia tools can work specifically for you and your government business, please let us know and we would be happy to show you. You, you can also call Ronit directly. She'll be happy to take your call at 206-373-9418. Thank you again, everyone.